You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. Grew up single mum, raised me on an estate. But I always watched my mum work. She, so she, had a, she had a normal job that she did. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she... Um, Mum would do everything from be the Avon lady, Tupperware, yeah. um, selling toys for the, on, yeah. on Christmas. Like after. I actually look forward to, to music so much that it got to a point that the last school I went to, I just went to music class. So I'd go to I'd go to uh, my music class before school. So eight in the morning, I'm in there. The teacher let me in, and it was like a back room where they had a computer because I'd already knew how to use Cubase or make beats mm. from the school that I just got kicked out of. But now I had time to kind of really do it there. So so I got to the point where before school, break time, lunch time, and after school, I was just going to music to the point where I actually got kicked out of that school officially. But the music teacher niced me, and they let me come to school but just come to and stay in the music class. We used to pay to go on pirate radio just mm-hmm. to be heard. Like, it was only 20 pound, but 20 pound was something then, you know what yeah. I mean? 20 pound to go on there for the month. And you just wanted you just wrote your bars and I made beats too. So to go in there and help like cut them on dub or whatever, I didn't have them, have DJs playing them and MCs MCing on it. Mm-hmm. That's the best thing. First time hearing your shit on radio and all that. Yeah. Even me, it feels like you're chasing the numbers game now. So mm. that adds to the anxi- anxiety. Yeah. How many views? How many likes? How many, all, like, what the fuck is that? We were on radio going mad, spitting our hearts out. Mm-hmm. And don't even know if 30 people were listening. The stabbing thing probably made me like, just look around me more. And, question like, things. Look, question people and like, yeah. uh, you know what? And then even two years later, I actually, looking back on it now, that was a bit of a, that was a bit of some, some bitch boy shit went on. Boom, we're on. We're there. Yeah, and today's guest, we've got Come Dizzy on. Rasco. Honoured, man. Honoured. First of all, thanks for coming on the show, brother. Yeah, like I told you, man, I'm, I'm a fan. It's crazy that I just, in the lockdown, I just come across your um your podcast. It's, it's a podcast, isn't it? Yeah. Naturally, I watched um, the, the Nutty, Nutty Redder from uh, the, the guy who was a football team from oh, Essex. Oh, Glenn Tamplin. Yeah, yeah. And I watched the whole thing. I was like, rah, this is going to... Then I ended up getting into just, just watching nothing and Darren G... I watch enough of them. Sick. Yeah. Sick. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, it's great man. to have people like yourself watching my stuff, man. Nah. It's unbelievable. Shows you how far I've come. Know what I mean? Yo. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I dropped you a message and you say, fuck's sake, brother, I watch your stuff, man. Yeah, random. Yeah. Random. Like I said, the fucking, yo, the energies or whatever. Yeah. Real. Synchronicities, the law of attraction. Oh, damn, yeah, man. and that goes for anybody watching. If you believe it enough, it, you will manifest it. For real. So watch what you watch what you watch what you wish for, man. Yeah, exactly, mate. So be, yeah, mm. be careful what you wish for is a very true saying. So, yeah. for a man who has nearly been in the industry for twenty years, two thousand and three, your first album, Boy mm. in the Corner. Yeah. Unbelievable so. album. Prop up. You brought. You started the rap game in the UK, I believe. That's crazy. Um, phenomenal album. Proper, especially when you've got Americans who are. Killing at that point, you had Eminem on top, and then the UK came through at 17 years old, and now new album coming out, which will plug straight away. Yes, sir. this is nearly 20 E3 years F. later. Yeah, yeah, fucking plug it straight away. Yeah. So where can people get this album? iTunes. Everything and- we're putting it on record tape. Every- we're going back to the basics, man. With like everything, everything you can think of. Amazing, because a lot of people are saying you're going back to your roots because it's kind of the same colouring, yellow, black, the album okay. cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's Is that, all that true? You're going That's like, that's like my superhero green. colours now, yeah. man. It's like, know, they know when it's black and yellow, it's, it's going to be hard. It's game time. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll touch on all that stuff. Yes, sir. Wait, I always go back to the start of my guest, brother. Yeah, man. Where you were born and how yeah, it all began. Yeah. So, I'm from Bow. East London, if, any, uh, if anyone knows where that is, just basically, if you're coming from South, it's right outside the Blackwall Tunnel, um, and in between Hackney and Newham, pretty much. Um, I was raised there. I learned, I learned all, the, I feel like I learned all my best lessons in life, or most of my best lessons in life there. Community, m- music, and that's where I learned music. Um, well, let me get into that then. 
So I learned music just by, say around the early, early 90s, jungle, drum and bass was massive. So you just get guys that were bedroom DJs at the time. So I'll just hear it coming out of, I don't know, Gary Slater or, some, or someone on my, on my estate. They'll be playing it, rinsing it. Just well, that, that was the thing then, innit? So then that's when I discovered pirate radio. So I'd, I'd listen to it and I find, random times like hardcore and jungle. Like, so that's, that's when I got introduced to that. So then that, that just opened up my mind to something else. And just, that's the first music I proper fell in love with. I randomly got into like heavy metal young as well. I think that was again through someone older on the state playing it and being and be like, wow, what's that? And then just, just got into it and then moved on to grunge or whatever. And then eventually hip hop, but hip hop would have been through, again, a friend whose big brother gave him the Snoop Dogg, the second Snoop Dogg album, it was the Dog Father. And then he borrowed it to me. And that's time, them t- these times it was on tape. That's the first rap ha- album I heard solidly. And I had a friend who who, who played me the uh, Bone Fugs and Harmony album. And that, that, uh, they rinsed that out. So like I said, yeah, all my all my lessons in life, all my music and all that I learned where I grew up. From a very young age. Yeah. I think that's where the best albums come from. The people who's kind of lived it, who's kind of seen a lot of shit in their life as well. I think that's where people get a lot of the inspiration. Mm. You look at guys like Tupac, Snoop Dogg, They've lived a lot of life of pain and quite dark times. And I think that's where, because a bit of poetry in there as well, isn't it? Oh, definitely, definitely. I was definitely quite vivid and kind of think outside of the box, especially we're talking about Boy in the Corner. And just, and then it would, and there's the, all these mad sounds that I'd use and all that as well. So that, a lot of that came from, especially with that album, came from the guy who was my manager now, nah, anyways, been my manager since there anyway. But he had a studio. And he'd produced as well over the years. So he just had a collection of all different keyboards, equipment, um, not plugins, um, units, whatever. And it's had all these mad sounds. So then me, Wiley, Roll Deep, all these, like we all used the same shit. But then when, when I used it, I was just on some different shit. What's that? Find the dirtiest, maddest sound. Yeah. And use them. And play just play different shit and put and whatever I spit on top of it. So that's why my album just sounded some, like some next shit. But mm-hmm. I was influenced by everyone you you both said as well. Yeah. So that's why I, had the, I think I had the um, I was influenced by drum and bass and garage MCs because they gave me the pride to sound like where I'm from. Because rapper the UK rappers at the time kind of sounded like they wanted to be or was trying to be American, where Garage and Jungle MCs were still kind of more sounded like they were from down the road. Even though they'd have some, a bit of that Jamaican yeah. thing to them, they still sounded local. But then at the same time, I was influenced by Tupac, Snoop and all that, as far as being like being an album album rapper, like wanting to make albums, yeah. like a, a whole body of work. What age did you start writing for? Boy what? in the Corner? Oh, okay, Boy in the Corner. I've, some of them lyrics I had from radio. So I know you're saying the album came out like 2003. But I would have written some of them lyrics like from like 2001. So a very young age to be. Yeah. That's a lyrical genius, man. That's proper shit. Thank you, man. Yeah. Well, I, you know, it's, I learned to write bars. I, I learned to rap on drum and bass. So I actually had to slow down. So mm-hmm. I, I basically, I learned, see how, see how you came when, I, when you come met me downstairs yeah. you playing jungle in the car? Yeah. I learned, that's, that's the tempo I learned to yeah, ride. Yeah, the car was and fucking shaking. Was booming, <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. And that was just for me driving, just driving down and think about other tunes and then, you know, you lead on to another tune, yeah. innit? And then, yeah, so drama bass just influenced me so much, but I learned to rap fast and then learned to slow down. But like I said, I was into the vivid writers. I was into Tupac, Jay-Z, the people at the time that I realised were good storytellers. Yeah, because that's where rap comes from and as American. It's mm. definitely, nobody heard that in the UK, especially way back in kind of 2003, which was nearly 20 years ago. You did, you started, you opened the door for a lot of the guys now in this era too. Definitely, definitely, yeah. yeah. Do you and get a lot of respect from that? Yeah, I feel like I've been giving my flowers, man. I can't, yeah. like, you, you can't have it all because like I said, it's like, it's how many years on, you've got, you've got people that are smashing it now, they're over 10 years younger than me. So, and and, and they're, they're the voice of their generation. You're the most so. successful rapper in the UK. I, I, I'm the most decorated. Yeah, five so, number ones. You've got five albums at the top ten. You've 
got every British award. Yeah. There's, I think Tiny's got more number ones. I'll give him Is that. It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If I were a guy, I'd have got it. Yeah, yeah, cheeky <laughs> bastard, yeah. But he's got more number ones, but I've got more awards. I've got, got mm-hmm. like, I'd, I'd more, I've got what? Is it three, three gold albums, two platinum albums? I'm all right. Yeah. yeah. How does that make you feel? How does it make me feel? No, no, it's always good for look, yeah. like, being, being, because being, you live it, though, because well. you live it, it doesn't really feel as big as people looking from the outside. Exactly. See, yeah. I, I heard a thing about Arsene. Not, not, I'm not to this extreme. I see like Arsene Wenger. I, I heard that he never kept none of the trophies or nothing that, that in his house. Yeah. So he just kind of just got on with it. I'm not quite like that. My shit's up there above the telly, like a yeah. nice like, thing. But yeah, you don't always think about that stuff. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you're reminded. Like I just got an, another award recently. Um, from Grand Daily by the time this goes out where yeah, you'll be alright but yeah, it's from Grand Daily so you, you always appreciate it especially later on yeah but um, no nah, it's not it's not why you do it you, you, the, the biggest the best thing other than take, being able to take care of your family because of because of the music and that yeah is just people just feeling your shit that's mm-hmm. why you make it like, of course like from, from the beginning there's like we used to pay to go on pirate radio just mm-hmm. to be heard like it was only twenty pound, but twenty pound was something then, you know. Yeah. I mean? Twenty pound to go on there for the month, and you just wanted you just wrote your bars, and I made beats too. So to go on there and help like cut them on dub or whatever, I didn't have them have DJs playing them and MCs MCing on there. Mm-hmm. That's the best thing. First time hearing your shit on radio and all that. Yeah. So that's kind of still about that now. Nah. But you need the rawness, don't you? But you still need to move with the times. Yeah. But again. I still listen to two pack near enough every day. I've, the bruv, game yourself. Yo, uh, there, do you know man. what I mean? It's um, on my Spotify. It's there. I've started listening to two pack again. You know why? Because sometimes the classics are just the classics. Uh, yeah. You know? Like you try and listen to new shit, but it's okay to just still like an old shit. You know. And yeah. I've been telling myself recently. Yeah. yeah. A good idea is just a good idea. Exactly. Like it doesn't yeah. matter in a hundred years. But good content stays forever. It is where it, it is. It fucking man. stays forever. Because them man captured. Yeah. So especially two pack. Yeah. He captured some shit that. It's rare mm-hmm. now. Yeah. And I think a lot of rappers, American rappers are terrible just now, if I'm honest. They ain't got, the, the, compared to back in the day when you had Dre, Tupac, Jay-Z. But then, but then it's a case it's of- It's different though. But that's, but no, no we're not, see, we're at that age. I think it's cause we're getting older. Do you know it's mad? Yeah. Do, do you ever think you'd be at that age where yeah. you'd be like, oh, like, how old are you? 36. 36. Oh, so you're a year older than me. Yeah. So we're like, we're exact same generation, uh-huh. but we're at that point now, like, ah, oh, nah, it was better back then. But the youth's now listening to their shit. Think I'm it's sure great. that they think that's the, yeah. that's the shit, innit? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I get yeah, it. Like, I still think I listen to new because when I was making this album, I was trying to compare it. Like I love my album, but there's 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 just a sound quality in the shit that was coming out in the '90s, and early 2000s again because they were using hardware, weren't mm-hmm. just all plugins or whatever else and yeah. all that. So I bought a bunch of keyboards and a bunch of shit now because mm-hmm. I want a bit more natural sound. So my next shit will just like will be a bit more like that, but. You, there are differences. There are there mm-hmm. are real differences, not just our old cunts. Like, yeah. they're right, they're like you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, so I get, yeah. I get what you're saying. Though. Yeah, I get it. How was your schooling? Because I know you got the name yeah. Rasco from. That's part of your name, isn't it? Does okay. it Rasco is from your schooling? Teachers used to call you Rasco. Yeah. So looking back in hindsight, I was troublesome, but I think it was a, it was a, it was a case of whatever. Like I guess. Mi- I'll say boredom. Cause I, now I'm older. I think everybody is wired differently, and everyone's everyone's learns differently. So, see, when you're when you're kids, you've got the school structure, the school system, and their curriculum of how everyone is supposed to learn. And then around that, sometimes they they might cater to people with a bit more special needs, or sometimes kids who are just way too smart. You had some kids in the only ones they they were geniuses, and they had, <laughs> they had to have a bring a tutor yeah. in because they were so. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Then everyone else is kind of just has to kind of fit into whatever's happening in it. Mm-hmm. I wasn't a kid that just fitted in easily, so sometimes I would act up. I act up a lot. To the point where I went, I, when I came to secondary school, I went to four schools. So, but what I did pick up from there, what I knew I always loved was music. So I actually looked forward to, to music so much that it got to a point that the last school I went to, I just went to music class. So I'd go to I'd go to uh, my music class before school. So eight in the morning, I'm in there. The teacher let me in, and it was like a back room where they had a computer because I'd already knew how to use Cubase or make beats mm. from the school that I just got kicked out of. But now I had time to kind of really do it there. So so I got to the point where before school, break time, 
lunchtime and after school, I would just go into music to the point where I actually got kicked out of that school officially, but the music teacher niced me and they let me come to school, but just come to and stay in the music class. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what that's what school ended up being. Yeah, like. but I think try to fit in the box, man, and sitting at a table, 95 and it's not f for everyone. I was nah. shit at school. I dog right. school. I left school at 15. But you're not thick. Yeah. And I said, even, and then even look. But late, if you're a visionary, on. they try and make you feel as if follow the fucking rules. If you don't know your times table, if you don't know your certain words, are, then you are thick. But your, your grades should not define you as a person. No, no exactly. And then it, and then even, even though I, when I say, oh, you're not thick, like it's not even meant to be disrespectful to anyone. Because like, I think there was a time when they couldn't even when they didn't even diagnose dyslexia or sh shit like that. And I know that some guys that like are legends, mm -hmm. actual legends that were dyslexic at the time when they didn't know what this, when they didn't yeah. weren't even diagnose. So they were already treated a certain way. As dumb? Basically. Yeah. But, but based on what they've done, it's not possible for them to be dumb yeah. after school. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But that system wasn't for them, not to even to put down the system mm -hmm. because like every system, it was obviously designed at yeah. one point to kind of just get through people. Yeah. I guess it's training people from nine to five. Yeah, I think Einstein says that I think everyone's a genius in their own rights if they right. believe something. And there's a man, Les Brown, who I was listening to a lot back in the day, was a motivational speaker and he says, people's opinion of you doesn't have to be a reality. Right. Because a lot of teachers say, oh, you're dumb, you're this, you can't do this, you're going to have no career. But yeah, yeah the most successful people in the world have. But, but even that isn't, that's, what, what is the teacher there for? Why would a teacher say that to a kid? Mm -hmm. it's not, it's not, it's, that's not acceptable, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, no, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. That's not good yeah, enough. Exactly. Like, what are you doing? Uh -huh. like, mm -hmm. you, you, like, you're a grown adult, uh -huh. you're already out there in the uh -huh. world, you need to be telling the youth, like, yeah. it's, there's something wrong with yeah. you, man. There's, um, 20 years later, you've got another album coming out, yeah. nearly 20 years later, which mm -hmm. I think's fucking phenomenal. I know you don't like talk, t talking about this subject, but it's a big mm. part of your life. Right. And I want to ask you some one thing from it. Yeah. When you look at guys like 50 Cent, the game, 50 Cent was shot nine times, yeah. the game was shot five times, you were stabbed six times, nearly died. Right. Do you think because you are centimeters away from death, that is why 20 years later you're still succeeding because you know how fast your life can get took away and you know how life is short because these guys are still succeeding also? No, th th there's a bit of that. There's a there's a bit of that you yeah you take, but to give myself credit like even before that if you think about that I was like sixteen seventeen mm -hmm. and in the studio till like six in the morning when yeah I was out and about running around doing stuff I shouldn't have been doing as well but not as much as I could have been and as soon as I had the opportunity and the chance to really knuckle down and be in an environment I yeah. was in there mm -hmm. so I think the drive's always been there been you know? there mm -hmm. yeah like, but that like, just put things into perspective that fuck this I'm going to succeed even to this day nah oh, is that a tough I one I want to give it credit like yeah but I don't know I just think that you would have still succeeded anyway I even have to give some yeah I have to give to, some credit to my mum because Grew up, grew up single mum, raised me on an estate but I always watched my mum work she, so she, had a, she had a normal job that she did mm -hmm. um and then she, um, mama will do everything from be the Avon lady, Tupperware, yeah. um, selling toys for the, on, yeah. for Christmas. Like after. Yeah, and, and my mom used to go to, not far from, not too far from mm -hmm. here, I'll go to Slough. There, there's a, like industrial, um, uh, what do you call it, industrial bit, fucking complex thing, whatever, where, where there's wholesalers. I used to go and get clothes and bring them back to the estate and take me around with her and go and sell them. Like, she's going wholesale, yeah, go mm -hmm. and sell them on the estate. Then I picked it up. Then I start going there by myself, like from both, like everyone knows it's, it's quite a far distance to be doing at like 14, 15, mm -hmm. whatever. So I always had drive. So it's like I said, it didn't, for me to be in the studio, yeah. like that with Cage and all that and be there, like, like I said, until early hours of the morning, I'll be there. I'll get there with my mates sometimes and then they'll go, I'll be there all the way through the night. And th these times it was in, the first one was in Deptford. Then it was like, then we moved to Bermondsey. Boy in the Corner was made in Bermondsey and Sheffield, randomly enough, <laughs> part of it. Yeah. yeah. So then, so, but when we was in Bermondsey, so in Cage, I'll be there in Bermondsey and then he'll drop me back to Bow, go through the rubber ice and then go back to where he was going and we'll go and do the same thing thereafter. So the mm. drives away, the, st the stabbing thing probably made me like, just look around me more. And question like, things. Question people and like, yeah. and you know what? And then even two years later, I actually, looking back on it now, that was a bit of a, that was a bit of some, some bitch boy shit went on. Yeah. Like people that were older than me that like, 
and and you you, you stay so you, and you can't say certain things to, to people and explain it without sounding like you're being bitter yourself. But there's actually some fuckeries. Like, yeah, of course, some, and no yeah. matter you'll still get this to this day. But yeah. that kind of stuff just makes you more aware. I believe that's yeah. You, you from, just, from yeah, you question everything, but the only thing is your trust issues goes. And I always say this: I don't fucking trust anyone because yeah. the more successful I'm becoming, I'm realizing the more. Sharks that are swimming around me want me to fuck up. Nah, it, it, it gets like that and it doesn't stop. And sometimes you have to just take your mind away from that and just like, I have to remind myself to just enjoy what I do because at the end of the day, I actually got rich and famous off my hobby. Yeah. Like for real. Yeah. So every now and then I have to tell myself to breathe. Like you're like, you're, you're like focused guy, in it? Mm -hmm. And you just want to, you don't want no chinks in your armor. You just don't want no yeah. L's. You just want to think Keep forward going all the forward, time, innit? Yeah. But then sometimes you have to remind yourself, like, Ra, you already won. Like, from, from <laughs> yeah, where yeah, you're yeah. from yeah. and what you've done, mm -hmm. or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Where you got yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, that you're, sometimes it's down mm -hmm. to you. Everyone ain't always out to get you. Some people, you know what? One thing, I'll never forget Richard Russell said to me once. He said to me, he was in, his, um, in the thing, and I was going on about something, and he said, people tend to really care more, mainly about themselves or what, what they think. Really, he's basically like telling me, um, get over yourself a bit. Yeah, <laughs> There's a bit yeah, of that. yeah, yeah. But basically, I thought about mm -hmm. it's true. Most people actually just care about yeah. what they've gone. Look at go and look at the comments on Twitter. When people leave comments and thing on there, what, what are they doing? Mm -hmm. They want everyone to see what they think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's where it is, isn't it? Yeah, I get it, man. And again, it's to focus on you because I always say, where well, your focus goes, your energy flows. So I don't give it too much attention. But to be successful as a lonely journey as well. See, after your first album dropped, did you distance yourself from a lot of friends or were you still with the same group? I, di I distance, but you see, as a kid, you have different pockets of friends. Yeah. So because I was doing music, what, what tends to happen, which carried on for a while, is that you, you're around your, your friends who are around in the day. And at that, hey, who's around in the day? They're, like, they're usually up to no good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, you've got that circle of friends and then eventually sometimes you end up falling out with them because whatever, they're just doing what they're doing and they're, their nature's kind of to fall out of each other anyway because of the type of shit they're doing. It's like sh drugs in it. It's, yeah. it's very snaky, isn't it? So just that fuck shit is just there anyway. And then guys not understanding that they can't come with you everywhere. So then you end up just becoming a target because people think you're getting, you're doing all right, you're mm -hmm. getting it and you're not bringing them in and all that kind of stuff there. But it's like, well, you don't do any, you don't, don't even do what I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. like, like, Why do yeah. people feel as if you owe them something? Do you get that? No, like, there's, there's always been a bit of that. And, that, and that's even when I was helping, I was always petitioning from people. Do you know what the problem is? It's when you stop. It's not even so much the not doing. It's mm -hmm. when you stop. There's always going to be people that feel like you don't do nothing for them. But but who the fuck? When have I ever done anything? Like what are <laughs> yeah, you on yeah. about? But then there's the people that you you've always done things for, done mm -hmm. stuff for. That it's when you stop. That's when you see the problems. That's when problems start. Mm -hmm. So I've always thought like, ah, oh, the hardest rappers here, yeah? the ones the most hard. Whoever thinks the most hard, they sometimes they've got it the hardest because eventually, as gangsters as whatever as they are. You got the most, you got the looniest people around you, yeah. and you have to cut some of them loose. It's just, mm -hmm. it's just nature. Yeah, it's just the nature of you. As your thing mm -hmm. gets better and as your life gets better, the music industry, yeah, there's, there's like, there's some, there's some dark parts of it. Yeah, why but do you overall, think that is like gangster? Why do you think it's rap is identified like gangster, gangster rap? Why does it get that reputation? Do you think? No, because it, it's, it's just natural. Same way with grime or with garage or jungle, or any of these things. Like, like you're coming from an underground settlement, like well, underground settlement, you know. Yeah. No, you're just coming from an underground thing where who put on the rate? Okay, so pirate radio. My thing comes from pirate yeah. radio and raves. Who put on the raves and who put on who built the stations? Mm -hmm. just like usually drug dealers. <laughs> if, we're, if we're being real, yeah, the whole team yeah, is yeah. like I have most of the MCs are drug dealers or the DJs are drug mm -hmm. dealers. It is where it is. Most of these things are coming from council estates. Yeah. So council estate, like just like the schemes or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's poverty. Mm -hmm. Like it's working class, so that's not not that that's all that's going on there because we know for that's not. Yeah. Most I feel like most people are just trying to get on with it, innit? But there's more temptation to do bad, bad. No, I don't even want to say that because there's a lot of rich people doing some fuck shit as well. Let me get back to my point though. Anyway, but the whole gangster thing around. I guess urban music mm -hmm. or whatever is just like coming. It comes from, from, from American side of things, like Tupac, Biggie shootings well, and stuff. Like two, I think that's a that's a that's a society. Well, nah, because gangster shit has been 
in the music industry, anywhere there where there's yeah. money, man. Like, what's, what Frank Sinatra and that up to? Yeah. No one talks about that. Yeah, that the was, mafia. Come on, yeah, bro. Like, yeah. it's like, Proper. Come on. Yeah. Like, they, they, they fucking gangster shit in the music industry. Yeah. Like, they played a big part of that. They mm-hmm. were the kind of beginning of a lot of that. Yeah, the Vegas so stuff. It's the, always been yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Like, Because even Tupac, he was never a gangster. He was into arts, acting, poetry. Yeah, but, all, but anyone who's even rapping, is, it's an art. So it doesn't yeah. matter how you could be rapping in the booth with an AK. <laughs> yeah. But what you're doing yeah. is no different mm-hmm. to really to like even if you murder someone in the booth mm-hmm. and you're rapping about it, it's still it's still art. Yeah. Just like just whatever, any storytelling, mm-hmm. any kind of thing, it's there just to dish that and entertain to move people. Like, that's yeah. it, like and because look look at the majority of people into gangster rap, they're not gangsters, are they? They couldn't possibly yeah. carry it if it was just down to gangsters yeah, yeah, who into yeah. gangster rap. Yeah. Just the same as uh, movies. If it was just down to mm-hmm. who reams who reams uh, reads crime or thrillers like books yeah. and all of that. It's not just mm-hmm. you know what I mean like Saying that, so, I know a yeah. few people who's watched Scarface and they think they're a fucking gangster. Ah, uh, Scarface. <laughs> you know, I was thinking Scarface was mad to me. Scarface, because I, I watched it later on in life. So, oh, did you? Yeah, I was old enough to say, I, oh, I don't understand what the bit, like, he's an idiot. He fucked up everything. Mm-hmm. Like, Killed? Like, yeah, he, fu- he his mum hated him. He got his sister fucked. He got his best mate fucked and his missus hated him. Mm-hmm. And then everyone come to shoot him. And yeah. the one bit that everyone holds on to is like, yeah, but he went yeah, out like yeah. a G. <laughs> 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 it's like, oh, no, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, but you tend to see drugs do that to people. Fucks their mind. Right. They feel untouchable. Been there myself. Um, so when you started after the first album, how did you deal with the fame? Boy from the streets, changing his life, becoming successful at a very young age. How did you deal with that? Because you seem very level-headed, even with your interviews. Mm. You don't fuck about. You speak the way you want. You, your words will never get twisted. So how did you learn to be quite level-headed? How did you deal with the fame at the start? I think some of it, because I did get to watch Pay As You Go, Maxwell, um, So Solid to an extent, and uh, More Fire Crew. I remember I came directly after but I was around, especially, like I said, more fire crew with pay as you go. So I watched what happened. I watched guys try to extort, extort guys, and like and all, all of the like the dark shit. I saw it for myself. So I learned how to just okay be low key. That's what you have to do. Don't don't flash. And a lot of it was was people they knew that were onto them, as well as just whatever city wide or nationwide you go to a place. Whoever's the guys there, I'm trying to make themselves known. We are all used to that, innit? That's like that's that's normal. You go to a place, guys want to make themselves known. They have become friends, or they're onto you. It is where it is. But I just just learn learn to just I try not to attract too much attention to me early, mm-hmm. to the extent where it's you no, know, it's mad. You see my first video, I I love you. I didn't want to be in the video. I was so because like, on pirate radio, people didn't even know know what we looked like, and then we do these raves, and the tape packs went went around. Even with the, with the pirate radio, it was tapes that travelled across the city, then mm-hmm. travelled across the country. But our faces weren't known, so I was used to that, and I kind of I liked it. Yeah, that means I wasn't getting stopped everywhere or whatever. But um, later on, it's time to be in videos. I didn't want to do it, but overall, I just laid low and I just tried, always tried to just ah, oh, don't say too much or just try attract unnecessary attention. Yeah, I think that's the best way to try and. A private life's a best, the best life, I believe. I think that's where a lot of people fail because they chase the fame, the attention, they feel as if... Because they don't know what it is. Yeah, it's bullshit, man. Yeah, a majority of it. Yeah. It is like a lot of unnecessary stuff. And then this whole thing about you and people expecting you to be a role model. But but I don't know. But they're not... They're, when, the type of, when I was younger, the type of uh, attention I'd attract was like you just be like in a situ like you'll be able to mind your own business and get into a situation mm-hmm. like that like gets dangerous just because but, but you're expected to just yeah. still be like a role model mm-hmm. like and that's and like I said that's what happened with a lot of people before me like because there's still that attack even if you're moving on the right path there's still that element of whatever the streets or whatever a bunch of people that are not looking at you like that or they're just looking at you as food or they like so you you constantly have to deal with that too whilst being mm-hmm. in the public eye. So when it when all that did happen to me and I did blow up around the first time around, like yeah, it was a bit mad because at the, t- at the same I was kind of the blueprint as well. 
because I, 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 I only one that kind of out of those groups that I named that kept going as a solo artist onto the next album and onto the next mm-hmm. album, onto the next. Album, there was there was nothing before me for me to look to for guidance as far as moving yeah. forward. Do you feel as if a lot of pressure comes on you then because mm. you became the blueprint that? Yeah. Because if a lot of people are watching you for inspiration and you fuck up, then it can put out someone else's light. Do you know what I mean? It's like you were the you were the the, the front runner from such a to to produce album after album after album. There's a lot more pressure come on your shoulders then to release the second album, the third album. I think that was my own pressure. I think that was not my own pressure. I seen it. Seen even like when you're saying about oh after I got stabbed, I work, I came back from Napa. I was when I went to the studio, like I was still like, like I had the stitches taken out, and I, w- I was skinny. I went in a great state. Went to went back to the state. Went back to the, the yeah. See everyone. Like, they thought I was dead. Like I just whatever. Chatting to everyone, and then but then I went, got back into the mode. I think you know. It's, I've just got an obsession with the music side. So all that extra stuff that you're talking about, all those outside elements of all mm-hmm. the pressure of all that. There's that in in there as well, but the main pressure, yeah, was just that I just wanted to be the fucking guy. When it came mm-hmm. to like this rap, I went to make, make the best shit, have it out, and have the biggest shit out. Mm-hmm. Like I think that's what really drove yeah. me. Yeah, so that's when you feel most alive when you're in the booth or writing music. I fucking hate recording. Do you? I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Like it's actually quite. If you're doing it for it's like it's quite tiring. Yeah. Like I'm gonna do that when I'm disciplined. Mm-hmm. It's like oh, I, don't, I didn't like that take. I have to do it again. Yeah. Like otherwise I'll, I'll be angry with myself when mm-hmm. when because it's, you, know, you see like once you're in the vibe you have to catch it. Yeah. And that's what people like Tupac were good mm-hmm. at. Like he, when you hear and you hear the vibe you hear that they they, mm-hmm. they caught a moment. Yeah. So that, but doing that sometimes, sometimes you haven't got the energy. You haven't yeah. got like your energy's ain't there. Yeah, it so just feels hard. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah I feel yeah. better making a beat. Mm-hmm. And then there's times like for years I weren't inspired. I stopped making beats after my third album. Up until 2017 is when I started making beats again. Mm-hmm. So for a whole, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean, a bunch of years I just didn't. But do you feel as if that's good though to re-energize and get away from all, get away from it all, and just enjoy your life as well? Because yeah. I'm a workhorse. Mm. I'm scared to take a step back in case I lose it all. So I kind of need to keep, like the first few years I think is, a, is an non-stop hustle. I just feel as if I don't want to stop because there's always somebody working, try to work harder, but I, yeah. I don't believe anybody's working harder than me. Do you feel yeah. as if that break though, re-energised you to go, well, fuck it, it's game time again? Well, I was fucking around in Miami and Caribbean and <laughs> that's right LA there, and and Texas <laughs> and all that. And like, which I'd been... It's crazy because I went to America like in 2003 mm-hmm. the first time and would go, would go over there to tour and do all my promo and all that and have some fun, but not like when I went there in 2009 up until whatever, when you went to Moon for cool. I was just like, yeah, 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 like, yeah. And just enjoying myself, still making music and that. Mm-hmm. But um, so I understand about yeah, sometimes just having a, having a breather and that mm-hmm. and, like, and just enjoying and just doing doing things for yourself. I was out there by myself and so made a whole new bunch of. Friends, a whole got a whole nother life out there. Yeah, you know what I mean. But then, yeah, you do want to come come back. You get back to the grind, like see what's important. Things have changed. The game's bigger than it's ever been. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? A whole bunch of new rappers, whole nother bunch of new youth, next generation, new sounds, and it's like, oh shit, okay. And that, and that's where see I was saying earlier on about what you've done in the past is cool, legendary, been given your flowers, mm-hmm. but it's not enough fuel. To, to drive me and keep me cool today. Yeah. It's just done. It's cool if you smash, do some, put something out, smash it today, then you can add it to all of that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. You know what I mean, but, yeah. but until that's now, nah, I need to grind, you know what I mean? But people make one album, they think they fucking made it, and then you don't hear from it ever again, or one single. That happens, yeah. You're seven albums deep, man. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I learned as well? I learned that it's actually okay. One, one year, I think I was in. Um, Serbia, I'm sure it was Serbia, somewhere like that, yeah. when, when, when that, that part of uh, Europe just kind of just started opening up to festivals and now, now it's the thing. You've got Outlook Festival, Croatia, like, that's a thing now. Mm-hmm. But we were going there just as they kind of opened it up and it was like, and um, I was at a festival and there's like an Indian guy come up to me and he goes, Dizzy, what's good, what's good, what's good? And he had dreadlocks. 
I'm like, oh, what's, what's happening, man? It's like, yo, it's me, man. <laughs> so it's me, like, me? He said, yeah, yeah bro, yeah. Um, no, no, it's Apache Indian. I was like, Apache Indian? I was like, oh, fucking Apache. Like, Why in your body? Yeah. Wiggle, you uh, remember yeah, that yeah, back yeah, in the day? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember, because when I was a kid, boom shakala. Yeah, 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 was yeah. massive on mm -hmm. the telly, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, and I was like, rah. And like, he was there, like, he was like, yeah, I was a Rastafarian now, he had a whole roots band. Like, I like, was like, said cool and all that, and kind of mm -hmm. had a nice chat, left it at that. And I thought about it, it's like, rah, that guy's got one song that I know of. He might have had some others, I don't know, but he actually had one song and he's still traveling. We're in Serbia. It's not like we're in England, okay? we're in yeah, Serbia. Yeah. So that means he's traveling the world, have at least, I don't know how many years, but at least 15 or something years later, mm -hmm. prob probably. So it's like, okay, you can live off, actually, you can actually live off one tune. Yeah. Like you can, mm -hmm. he, he seemed all right. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? <laughs> he seemed yeah, all right. Yeah. Every time I put too much mm -hmm. pressure on myself, sometimes mm -hmm. I remember that. It's nah, nah, you're, it's all right. Yeah. You're good. Even if you didn't really say any albums, you could still travel the world and sing your songs. Do you because do. the tongue in cheat album right. was a fucking monster. Went mad. Monster. Yeah, man. Went mad. And that that, that was like really was the biggest. Um, I took a chance. That was a big gamble. You kind of changed up the. the the sound and the, the mixing and everything was different, but right. pe why, why do you think people related to it? It's a bit because it was bonkers, it was fucking kind of, but it's genius as well. You know what? I want to sit here and say, Yeah, you know, it's because of that, but you know, the God on his truth is, I don't, I can't, I don't really know the answer. I just mm -hmm. know if I base it off what I see it do to people when I'm at a show and how people jump up and react. Only they could tell me, but I just know what their actions are telling me. And mm -hmm. they, they are just jumping up, going mad, and they're just letting loose all inhibitions. They know all the words and they go off. And I guess it's, it's it's an event. Those Each one of those songs is like, whatever, Dance With Me, Holiday, Bonkers, especially those three, they're like an event. It is like kind of euphoric. Mm -hmm. And it's a bring everyone together, they bring everyone together songs. But it wasn't like I was making, like, oh, I need to go pop now. It weren't really, like that. The first one that came was Dance With Me. So that came off the back of, I just said I had three gold albums. So it was my, I was signed to XL Recordings, which were, they're a, a indie label, but they're a huge one. Probably mm -hmm. the biggest in the UK is them and Domino, I think. Well, I think XL might be bigger. So I was done. And so it's about, about the re-up, because I've done my three albums about the re-up. What happened was, I'd, whilst making that last album, I saw a Calvin Harris song on the TV. It was acceptable in yeah, the yeah, 80s. Yeah, yeah. And for whatever anyone mm -hmm. thinks about what Calvin Harris has done in the last few years, yeah, which is fucking huge anyway, mm -hmm. but it's like some people, it's really mainstream, isn't it? It become the mainstream. Except when the 80s, nothing sounded like that on the radio, on the TV or the radio at that time. It was perky, you had those synths. It was almost like some 80s music, like yeah. it was really quirky. And I was like, rah, what, yo, who's that? What's that? And I was like, right, it'd be sick if I could get a MC on one of his beats, like on a beat like that. Oh, would be that'd be good. And I thought about it and I kind of just had it in the back of my mind. Then he made another song with um with the Mitchell brothers. They at the time they were called the Mitchell brothers, where some from Forest Gate. And um when I saw that, it wasn't a massive tune, but it had rappers on it. And that's when I said, Yeah, like mm -hmm. you can rap on these songs. So I met him at Radio One Big Weekend. And um, I said, I, I approached him like, yo, like, I love, like, you're sick. I love what you're doing. And it would have went something like that. I don't mm -hmm. know exactly what I said, but like, yeah, like, like basically let's work. Let's let's do something, it'd be cool, innit? So then I don't think, 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 sent a few ideas. I can't remember what happened. But I ended up writing something, writing those lyrics on Dancing Me to another beat that I got sent by another another dance group. Or I can't remember it was. Groove Armada, I think. And then my managers heard it, it was like, yo, it's good. They think these lyrics will go better on something else. That's when I got Calvin to send me something. Mm -hmm. Sent me that beat, practiced the words on them, that's go and re-record them, got the singer in, blah, 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 all the rest is history and all yeah. that. But that's, that was how I went, that, that got into, that's what started that album. But it's a game changer as well, isn't it? But yeah. again, it's fucking scary to take risks. Yeah, and it's not, like, I, I think I tried to make a pop attempt before on my second album, I got a song called Stand Up Tall. But it was still coming from an underground vibe. 
Yeah, because the if you listen to Stand Up Tall, the drums are actually, if anyone knows a tune called Pulse X, it goes bong, ch, ch, bong, bong, mm-hmm. ch, ch. It was big on the underground. All the MCs used to MC see on it. Some people would say that like that, that kind of birthed grime. There's kind of the eight bar switch, mm-hmm. right? But so that was a big, that was a big tune, yeah? But for the record, I birthed grime. Right? <laughs> so, cool. Yeah, but, um, but Stand Up Tall was like a pop version of that, mm-hmm. but was made by the guy who made, um, Pulse sex. So I guess that was the first time I tried to make like mm-hmm. a poppy kind of tune. And it did it, it did well. I'm sure it was I'm, I'm sure it was like number 10 in the charts. And that was good for me at that time. Um because I was only on my second album, like I mm-hmm. said. But then fast forward to Dance with Me. And then um Bonkers just came randomly. I didn't ask for that. I was in Denver. So I was doing like an American tour and I was in Denver in a hotel. I was in the hotel because we could come back and the show had actually been cancelled for whatever reason. And um, I got sent it, listened to it, and it had the barn curries on it. And I remember thinking, oh, right, this sounds like the music I hated when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. I didn't like house music or that poppy house shit, <laughs> shit that you used to see on the telly, like, on yeah. top of the pops and yeah, all that. Yeah. Sash, I'm calling for yeah. that's, what, that's what I used to think. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I didn't like that. Uh-huh. But... But at this time, it's like 2008, 2009, something like that, late 2008. And I'd been to Ibiza. By mm-hmm. now, I'd been to Ibiza now, partied, enjoyed, understood. Yeah, the music. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. like, oh, okay. Uh-huh. I'd never been in a setting before mm-hmm. to, un- to get it and understand it. So that's how I was able to write bonkers, mm-hmm. like not even write it That down. still gets played everywhere, even Crazy. to this day, mate. Yo, Fucking nuts. Man, did it, at, did it at the Olympics. Yeah, so see when you, when you were writing that, I mean then, it's all done, produced. Do you listen to it and go, this is going to be a fucking banger? Nah. Was there any sort nah. of nah? I wrote it. That's, I didn't even write it down. I just remembered it because it's that easy. And um, came back to England, r- recorded it. And then didn't think anything, didn't even think about it again. Hmm. Cause I didn't think it was that good. That's mad, isn't it? Because it was too far from what I was doing, I guess. Maybe I even, maybe I even had the thing where you started. Too, yeah, like that kind of, I'm not sure about yeah. that. I just knew it bang was like, not not something I would mm-hmm. have tried to make. It's just, yeah. got, I knew who Armin Van Helden was, because mm-hmm. again, like- in a, Ibiza. Yeah, no, but even before that, he had the yeah. tune, what's it called? Gotta be, what's the big tune he had? Um, Gotta you be. don't even know me. And because that used to be on the box every fucking day. Remember mm-hmm. the box, the music yeah, channel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, me- I remember the video and it's like, oh shit, that's Armin Van Helden. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll do a song with him. Went went until like a few months later. Yeah, a few months later, my manager said like, um, like you're gonna want that on your album, yeah. I said, what you, you think? He said, yeah, <laughs> like you're gonna mm-hmm. want that. Like, all right, cool. It wasn't until I did, I did. I was doing a UK tour, and so, and I just played it. I'm sure. It, yeah, I played that. Was it dancing me? I played it. Yeah, I played bonkers. At the end, just just at the end of my show, just to like, ah, just like, ah, here's another tune we've got. Yeah, like, we see mm-hmm. what you're saying. I so think, you weren't feeling it at all? No, in fact, I'd already had, no, Dance With Me had already mm-hmm. been number one. Yeah. So we was in Liverpool, we played it, and it went mad. And I'd never seen a song that, that of mine being played to a crowd for the first time and then be like the climax of the whole night. The response. And I was like, oh shit. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Like, we knew that, okay. <laughs> and yeah, it was number one. That's yeah, phenomenal. Fucking great tune. Great tune. Crazy. How do you feel? How's Calvin Harris? Good Scottish man. <sighs> fucking hell. It's all, when I was talking about, yeah, I was just going out having fun fucking about in yeah. America. So I'd go and see him. So I'll, I'll go to LA. He's living in Bel Air. Go to the house. Like, all right. This is how, you, this is how you're moving. Mm-hmm. I, I like it. And he's got the, the, the Dreams studio set up that he built himself. Like you go there, he you, you comes down in the golf buggy, the golf cart thing, whatever, <laughs> takes you out there, ah, oh, man. And then you jam him in for a bit. And then he had the Vegas residency. So then it's like, let's go Vegas. I want to come with y'all. Like go there, drive to, um, I can't remember where airport it was. When it's the one just that, not that, is it Van Nuys? I can't remember. We just go there, get on his jet, his jet. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it was his jet. Get on the jet fly to Vegas, go for the hotel, the different entrance. He's got the different, he's got the, he's got the different, um, the different room. He's mm-hmm. got the, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, you need to spend a million, if you you need to be betting a million to get even near, anywhere near this mm-hmm. thing. And I don't gamble, so I don't even know that, but that side of it. But I knew it was where the big boys play. Went backstage, just saw what he was doing, looking around like, fuck, this is like, and just understanding the money 
and just the, all the moves that was being made around this yeah. whole thing. Because really, what are they doing? They just fucking, they just, man, just EDM just caught on to them in America and they just managed to fucking just give shit loads of money to to DJs to sell yeah. at oh, way, over, way overpriced mm -hmm. tables to whatever, oligarchs and whoever else, like, who don't even really give a shit. Yeah. Like, right, yeah. they just want to go out or whatever because they can, innit? And then, um, and then we'll just get the jet back. <laughs> so that we we'll just like yeah. literally just, like, <laughs> that, go up about thirty five minutes on the jet mm -hmm. to work, do the thing, hour and a half, two hours, and come back. That's how he's living. Like, Fucking fair play. Yeah, he's a superstar. Crazy. He's a superstar. Nah, crazy. For where he's came from to what he's succeeding now is unbelievable. I think that's also good business for you. It's good strategies. Everything's levels. Mm. So for you to go, right, I'm going to get him. Guys like Robbie Williams as well. Working with these kind of people just enhances your shit as well. And to put it together and, and create bangers as well shows that the talent and the craft and the visualisation oh, and definitely. the fact to take risks is great. Yeah, and also sometimes I just want to see what I can get away with, innit? But there's, there's a bit, I want to I just take all of that praise yeah. and like, yeah, he's right, I'm a fucking genius. But then sometimes, yeah, it's just that, like, what can I get away with? Yeah. And that's why I've done some things where people are like, what the fuck is he doing? Like, yeah, push the boundaries. Yeah, yeah, push the fucking boundaries. But then sometimes, yeah, sometimes it ain't even always about the music. Sometimes it's about where the, sometimes where the music takes you. Because, like, like you said with Robbie Williams, okay, then. Actually, he actually wanted me on Rude Box years before that, and I wasn't ready. But Why? I just at like, that time I wasn't ready to be on Rude Box. I heard yeah. it, and I wasn't ready. <laughs> <laughs> I weren't ready. But then we did our tune, and then mm -hmm. we actually went to. He wasn't supposed to be on the tune. Actually, I had that. I, I recorded that song in LA, and Example was supposed to do it. And then he couldn't sing it at the time. I can't remember why he couldn't sing it. And then, and then, so we had no one to sing it. And then somewhere out of, out of the blue, man said something about, oh, Robbie Williams is around. I said, Robbie Williams? Like, yeah, <laughs> like, that's mad. Like, mm -hmm. Robbie, on a, Robbie Williams on a train, that'll be mad. And so then I went to his house. And at the time, he was living in one of his fucking four or five mansions, yeah. yeah. But this, this house he was in, um, I think it was Ringo Starr's old house. And Paris Hilton and Slash were his neighbours. I remember that. I remember, yeah, just being in the yard. He, again, he had his own studio. He, he showed me a bunch of cars, showed me a bunch of stuff. We talked about Tupac and hip hop because he's yeah, a massive Tupac yeah, man. Yeah. And I saw the photo with him and Tupac at the Versace party. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh shit, like you party with Tupac, like shit Daddy? like that. Yeah, like, shit. If, you get, if you ever get Robbie Williams yeah, on he's it, good, and I think, on. he's a big fan of the podcast. Yeah, no, I, I can imagine yeah. that, I can imagine that. Yeah, you, like it'll, it'll tell you anything about rap music, trust me. Like he, like, he knows his shit. Like, he do you like, think, yeah. he's a brother from the ends really, isn't it? Yeah, he's a fucking megastar, absolute megastar. He, he is, yeah, but he's still, a as big guy. as he is, he's yeah. like, He's from normal boy from a castle. Yeah, of state, course, man. He's had yeah. his problems as well. He's changed them, and yeah, he's, he's very he, big into like conspiracies, aliens, and fucking. He told me yeah that he, he that, uh, take that did a massive concert yeah, and I don't know if it was Nebworth or somewhere mad where it was huge yeah, and he said the vibe was so mad, so big. He looked up. He said the aliens were above the like the flying saucers. Yeah. He told me that. Was he taking drugs at the time? He wasn't taking drugs <laughs> at the time. He told me about. I don't know if I'm supposed to say. He definitely told me that he definitely spent a few months in the back of his garden, like eat up or whatever the mm -hmm. fuck. He's done a lot of mad things, and he told me that there was a there was a ghost in his ass as well. And he he, he asked Ringo about it. He said, "Oh yeah, yeah, it's there. It comes in every now and then." He told me a bunch of mad yeah. shit. He told me a bunch of mad. Mm -hmm. But my point, going back to my point, was that I got to see how someone who that it's not like take that wasn't the biggest thing mm -hmm. when I was growing up. I got to see that someone in a similar position to mine as well, someone who got big, young, obviously went to crazy heights, but big, young, what it looks like at the heights yeah. to the point where he's living amongst big American superstars. And like it's huge, fucking gets a million for a fucking, for a, for a wedding song, sing, like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Shit like that. So that was almost as important as music. I got to see that. So I got not got to get more background. Like I said, I, there, there was no blueprint for me coming up as a successful rapper, no one else for me to look at, no stars for me mm -hmm. to look at. There was no one like me. So being introduced to that that kind of life and seeing that, even though I don't, like I said, I'd had a bunch of number ones by then anyway, but mm -hmm. it was nice to see that, okay, someone who's been huge, 
him telling me about some of the pitfalls he's been through and under, mm-hmm. like some of the stuff he's seen and all the crazy shit and all that. It's like, rah, fucking no. So, okay, okay, that's available too if you want it. You might want to steer away from some of it, but yeah. this is a guy that's seen it all, has been super honest with you. Mm-hmm. Like, you could, that, that's, and the, the music took me there. That that might have stopped me doing some shit that might have destroyed me today. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And and God willing, he's still blessed. He's mm-hmm. super blessed. Yeah. Fucking what? What's his biggest problem? He's fucking arguing with Jimmy Page or some <laughs> shit about that. About building the fucking thing in yeah. like across Holland Park mm-hmm. in, in one of his other fucking mansions. mansions like, yeah, it, so yeah. like yeah. it's blessed. Like. Yeah, he seems like a right good guy because you've you've rubbed shoulders with superstars like Pharrell Williams. What's he like? Pharrell, Pharrell, oh my god. He's one of them dudes I always bumped into over the years. Like, but he'd be one of the first Americans to like bring me out on stage, like in like mm-hmm. 2005 or whatever. He was doing it from then. Did it in England. Did it in Denmark. He's like fucking Benjamin Button, man. He ain't got any older. Definitely, <laughs> but he's definitely done some bullshit as well. Sometimes. Oh, like, he? he was in Miami once. I'm, I think I see him. Was I see him? At the, I see him out somewhere, and he said, "Yeah, yo, look, I was trying to get in the studio." So we got in the studio, and it was with an artist called Yuna. You know, who's huge, a Malaysian artist. <laughs> I remember, yeah. He um he just did he was not even no no big deal, but it's that one of like, oh yeah, like oh what did he say? We was in there, say, yo, I'm like No, nah, so I'm thinking of Will I Am. A situation happened with Will I Am. What but was this that? but this thing with Will I Am was in the studio with him. We we was play we was produce he was producing the tune. We did a tune together. No, no, he didn't produce a tune. I'm all over the place, bro. That's okay. I'm what was tired. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> what happened with Will I Am? We made a tune. I made a tune. I wanted him to vocal it, so I went to the studio and he was there dancing around the tune, going mm-hmm. like he's, he's a bit wacky and that. Then he gave me this whole speech about ah. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not one of them producers that likes to, that, 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 like, I like to be there when it's being done. I don't like to be, I like to be there. Yeah, so then, all right, cool. So I like, recorded the thing, got down to what I was doing, came out, it fucked off. <laughs> That's why I got muddled off, because yeah. the first time that happened to me was mm-hmm. for real. Mm-hmm. I was in the studio, I said, yeah, do this, like, yo, it's dope, it's dope, it's dope. Cool, just, just do this bit. I've come, I've did it. I've come out. And Pharrell's fucked off. No one to be seen. <laughs> and, I'm not, and I'm not allowed to take the music. That mm-hmm. wound me up. Yeah. <laughs> All that time Where the fuck did they go? Was that what we say? Where did they go? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But just to, to bring more t- context yeah. to it, I remember I was doing a TV show called Must Be the Music with um, Jamie Cullum, and I told him about it. And then, it, then he started telling me about a story. He was in the studio for real. And they were recording something and they were watching basketball. And the same same thing. He's mm-hmm. doing his thing. And then Pharrell said, Hey, yo, I'm, I'm gonna be back in a minute, man. Like, just keep doing what you're doing. It's dope. Whatever. Like, he said, Yeah, cool, cool, cool. So he was there. And it's like it'd been a it'd been a little while. And James was like, yo, like, oh, I wonder where Pharrell is. Is like, is he like, where is he? Hello, where's right? He'll be back, he'll be back, he'll be back. And I think he said it was a little while, and then he looked up on the telly, and Pharrell was there at <laughs> the game. <laughs> and just, just kind of left him there, yeah. shit like that, yeah. There's phenomenal names, though. To be working with these kind of people is unbelievable as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but you know, I'm not gonna lie, there's been other people that has been like, maybe not as big, yeah. but like better experiences as yeah, far as making man. music yeah, with them, yeah, 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 yeah. 2010, you won a Brit Award, yeah. best male. Phenomenal award. That was crazy. To, up against two Scotsmen as well, Paolo Nutini and Calvin Harris. But I think Robbie Williams as well. Yeah, but you know what? It was more of, you know, it, it meant more because um, I've been nominated a couple times, mm-hmm. but it was like for the urban or, yeah. or th- those kind of yeah, categories. Yeah, yeah, for your first few albums. Yeah, but it's the fact that it was those categories, urban category. But this one was just like best British it's mouth. The biggest. Yeah, so that that was like raw. And like I said, it was a time where I was independent. So so you didn't get signed after your first three albums, like you didn't. No, nah, I don't think I mentioned that in the story. That that, that was the point. So when um, Dance with Me, I should have said that I was waffling on. But basically, they didn't want Dance with Me mm-hmm. because they did. They don't, don't think they was feeling the di- direction, and they weren't giving me the money that I wanted. I felt, I felt like I wanted more money, naturally, whatever, innit? I yeah. feel like I'd done, I'd earned it. So we ended up putting out Dance With Me like, independently, mm-hmm. just like before I got a record deal with them in the first place. Yeah. We used to basically press up white labels, press up records and take them to the record shop. So I thought, I thought it would be like going back to how it was when I was 17. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, so when I did go no, number one, whatever, that album, I was, 
so proper independent artist. I, was, I wasn't signed to anyone. I so it worked in your after. favor. It worked in your favor then. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's a fuck you kind of thing, isn't it? No, nah, it's just more money thing kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like basically, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah basically. Yeah. How was it? Did you feel as if when you won your Brit though, um, your rewards don't make you as a person, but to win the best meal against some superstars, did you feel as if that was you properly arrived on? music scene or do you feel as if you'd already achieved a lot before that no I definitely felt like I'd achieved a lot it was just the way it happened did you expect that I weren't I weren't sure because I'd, I'd been there a few times and not one I'd been nominated sorry a few times and not one but to win it like that on after a string of number ones these I'd had four number ones on the, on, on the album I'd had five number ones but four of them was on the album and then I did that big performance with Florence no, I hadn't had four number ones yet because that song that I did with Florence ended up going to number two. I'd had, I'd had, I'd had four number ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was four number ones because that, that came after. Uh -huh. But um, I didn't expect to win it because the way the Brits is, it, it's all the majors, isn't it? Yeah. Basically, so it, it feels like one of the things where they kind of dish it out to each other. So I, I wasn't, I wasn't mm -hmm. expecting me just as an artist with not signed to any of them, with no, just on my own label. Mm -hmm to be getting the biggest Brit. Well, the biggest Brit. The, 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 yeah, yeah, they the, can win, yeah. biggest category. Like, yeah, best meal. After having all that success, so that mm -hmm. it was kind of mad. So I went, I went to bed, but after I won it, yeah, it was like, it's amazing. Cause yeah, cause then we got the Mercury, the Ivan Novello, Brit Award. Mm -hmm. like, those are the three like kind of, you could say most important British yeah. awards. Mm -hmm. So what was it like then taking your break for a few years? Why did you make that decision? What, 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 what was that about? So the next album was the fifth. That was the only one where I had Robbie Williams on it. Yeah. Um, that came out, what, in 2013? I think yeah, I, just, I just went to America. It's the first time I went to America to make an album as well. Mm -hmm. So there was, there was that, I was hopping around. And I just, I'd just done so much work back to back. So I think I just was kind of enjoying myself in between. Then I put out an EP and I was making, no, I put out another album. But again, I was serious about it, but I wasn't here a lot. And I was just kind of finding my, wondering even if I even wanted to come back and live in England. It was the first time when I thought about living somewhere else. Why? Like fully. A lot I of fame and went, attention. Yeah, I'd been through so much, like psychologically, like I said, all, just, all, just all those things I had to deal with from young. And then I got famous, famous. Mm -hmm. Cause I felt like I was popular at the beginning, but then like after winning the Brit Awards and all that, like yeah. you're famous, famous, the old lady in the bank knows who you are. Like, you, can't, mm -hmm. you can't identify who's gonna recognize you, innit? And it's mainly loved by then, but it can be a bit overwhelming. Yeah. So at the end of 2009, I, I went on holiday, I ended up going to Miami cause I couldn't go to Antigua. And I remember, just walking to the beach every day and just just feeling free. And I think that's what kept me over there. And I, I was supposed to go for two weeks. I ended up staying for a few months and then just kept going back all year, then bought a place. So, and then from, from there, I got friends that will come and see me from Houston and then they'll go Houston, like Bun B and all that. I'll go, I'll go Houston, go back and forth. Then I started going to New York again, but I never used to go to New York on my own. I used to go to New York and LA just for work, so I'll go with the label, manager, all this thing, do promo and have a bit of free time out there. Mm. But then so I started going to all these places by myself, making new friends, then going to Vegas, then going to Grand Cayman, and going to Jamaica, and going to all these places on my own and just enjoying them differently. And the other thing, growing up here, yeah, I weren't a raver. So my, I'd still get to go West End and all that, but I didn't enjoy it. Like, mm -hmm. not really, I enjoyed some of it or whatever, but I, and then we'll go on tour, do bits and bobs and all that, but it, it wasn't, I didn't feel free. We still had to keep, look about what's happening and all that, like, as if I'm in England, any part of it, you still have to just keep looking about, innit? When I went Ibiza, that's when I started enjoying, like, that different mm -hmm. kind of party and house yeah. music, and like, oh, oh, everyone's different, mm -hmm. the vibe's different, like, okay, like, it's nice. And when I started going to America and all that, that's when I started going to, like, the type of, sh like, Okay, this is the time everyone's like, turn up. Everyone's like, yeah, turning yeah, up and yeah. all that. Starting to, yeah. Doing all the shit that I see in the rap videos. Mm -hmm. You're still young, in that environment. You're still fucking young. I know. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? So that's why I'm glad that I was able to, to, to take do it the my own accord, yeah. but not go too far mm -hmm. to the point where I come back and I'm a wreck and I'm fucked. I don't know what yeah, I'm doing. Burn I don't yourself know out. Yeah. Yeah, I think the break probably done you the world a good. 
Mm, no, definitely. How's your, your family must be proud of you? Yeah, definitely. And that, that's the best thing, being able to just take care of stuff. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Take care, take care of your people. And yeah, that's, that's the, the beautiful thing. thing in life. That's why you've got to keep pushing forward to keep succeeding and they, keep that that helps knowing that you can you can do that. Yeah, you can take them on holiday when you feel like and Yeah. Mm-hmm. Time time is the most important thing, man, because you can it, there's been times definitely where you think just I've obviously gone through a phase where you think you can just pay for everything mm-hmm. and just give people money or this oh they want that, just give them that, give them that. But sometimes sometimes your time yeah. is more important. Yeah, money can't buy time and it's, it's a precious yeah. thing to be able to enjoy life and I think that's the thing, balance. It's the memories. Yeah, man. yeah, memories you last for a lifetime, I believe, and yeah. they last forever. Some good, some bad, but I believe the bad ones make us who we are today. Oh, definitely. I've got some bad memories that I can laugh about now. Yeah. I laugh about now. And then yeah. people have been, yeah, sometimes you say, you, you think you've been through some shit and you tell you say it to someone and you're embarrassed after after they tell you what they've been yeah, through. Yeah, like, oh yeah. shit, all this time I thought I'd have been yeah. through something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the new album, mm. E3. E3, e- AF. E- 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 what is that? Af. Is that Af. Af. swear words? Af. Nah. No, African. Is that? E3 African. So what's that mean then, E3? The E3 African. The like, AF is just abbreviated. Is that? Like back, back in the day, like when you saw an Africa, they call mm-hmm. them an AF. In my area, AF, or you had a Jamaican, a Jamo, mm-hmm. who we call it AF. Yeah. So, so where's the inspiration from this album? Come. A lot of it's, um, I made an album that's, like, I've produced a lot of it, so it's mm-hmm. back to me on the beats, like, so, like, the early grime shit, the original, old school, dizzy, raw school, that's what they're saying, old school, dizzy. They separate the two, innit? But, um, so, me making beats, but then I've got a lot of MCs on it, so it's, like, me back to bar, bars, basically, so everything went from... Old school, does it? Yeah. I know it's it's my I'm 35 I don't, see, I don't see old school dizzy I'm just dizzy innit <laughs> yeah. 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 whatever and they separate it <laughs> like, you see like they, you got their Beatles fans or their Elvis fans yeah. they've, got, they've got different eras of their yeah. fans innit like mm-hmm. my, I feel like I've got fans you've got fans who like all my shit and there's, there's yeah. some fans who do they don't, they don't fuck with that shit yeah. they make a point of saying no 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 not that, not that dizzy <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, right, yeah, cool, yeah, yeah I have to deal with that but yeah but um, so then I've got everyone from Getz, Kano Chip P Money, Frisco, D Double E, all them people. So you know yeah. what kind of album it's gonna be. It's bars, like back to back. So it's wicked to work with all, all, all those people. You nervous? Yeah, man. Nah, I'm. I'm not. I'm not nervous now. Now I've got the first video out. Now, now it's mm-hmm. done. Is that with Chipmunk? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the stuff, the stuff, kind of stuff. I'm more anxious about because I produced so much of it. It's just mm-hmm. like ah. Oh, that bass ain't cutting through like I want it to. Mm-hmm. To like ah, oh, it's not like them old jungle records, man. Like oh, this stuff like that. I already know that we're coming. Like it's a whole new. There's so much art. There's so much new, new rap, new yeah. artists that I listen to. I do go on Grand Daily every day and I see what's out. Mm-hmm. So and I listen to, it, especially with the, the young driller youths. I, like, I listen to it. So I already know that there's no. I'm not trying to compete with them necessarily. Mm-hmm. So and now I've got a strong fan base, strong low fan base of people. From all creeds, colours, or, or 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 demographics, or whatever, that just want to hear some new shit, and I've got it for them. It's a nice balance because I've still got the the upbeat shit, like, the, like even the, the track I was telling you about that was inspired by me watching your interview mm-hmm. with uh, Glenn like, Tamplin. Y- yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a track called "You Don't Know." It's like like a garagey thing. Garage, what is a garage tune? The, uh, I actually got the beat because I'm, I um, I was in Switzerland one day. And when I come off the flat, a guy introduced himself to me and uh, his name's Decline. And then he, they, I didn't know him, but they explained to me, he made the song, I don't smoke the reefer. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh shit, sometimes people have to explain to me what yeah. tune they made, mm-hmm. didn't it? I was like, okay, okay. So then we started working, but, it went, but that was like years ago. Mm-hmm. But then he gave me this beat, I had it, had it for a while, but weren't sure about it. But then one day I was just sitting down, in, I think I was in the studio at home, and I was just watching YouTube. So I just sit and just watch mm-hmm. YouTube. And then your thing come on. I don't even know why I clicked on it. And I just watched the whole thing. And there was a part when he was talking about, um, he was in the club, it was all P. Diddy, after P. Mm-hmm. P Diddy ties and that, and he was popping bottles and doing mm-hmm. all that. And it, it, it reminded me like of when I first did all that. And I know the error he's talking about because of his age. And I know that I came directly behind that. So I still saw all of mm-hmm. that. I saw China mm-hmm. Whites. I saw faces and all the, them places that I know, I've, in my mind, I know what yeah. he's talking about. So then it reminded me, inspired me. And then part, 
part of that is in the verse that I wrote. Mm -hmm. Became part of, a big part of of the tune mm -hmm. that it, it gave me the juice. Yeah, to like to add that part of, mm -hmm. of it on that. So that that was good. Yeah, yeah. I fucking love that, mate. That yeah. you've watched one of my podcasts and got an got inspiration, inspiration from it. Like for real, because I had the, the beat for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, class. So that's it. What do you think the state of like grime is now? Do you think there's a lot of good boys coming through? A lot of good artists. As far as, far as grime, yeah, it's it's not at the forefront of the charts mm -hmm. or like mainstream right now but I think it's been so influential even to the whatever a lot of the drill scene or even a lot of yeah. the Afro swing guys a lot of them were grime MCs at one point yeah and they just moved on to other shit and that's what's worked for them yeah like just like I didn't know that a song with Armour Van Helden would probably be my, my biggest song maybe it's arguable mm -hmm. that Bonkers is my biggest tune yeah you try something new and that's what ends up taking off I think that's what happened with a lot of the guys that are popping right now. I reckon a lot of them were into grime, mm -hmm. but that's not what took them to yeah. the top. Yeah, of course, you've got to utilise it to the advantage. You look at Stormzy and that working with Ed Sheeran and mm. it, it opens doors, man, and it's and, and I believe it's good business. It's good oh, music and uh, yeah. same as like Bugsy Malone. What do you think of like, the beef in that? I know Wiley's the king of beef. Like him and um, he's not the king of beef. Yeah, he's but you know what I mean? He's always, fucking... what do you think about like, him and Stormzy? Think, do you think that's good for grime? To, br to get more traffic towards that? I, 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 nah. I, don't, know. I don't even care. If I'm, if I, if I'm honest, innit? Yeah. Nah, I don't, I don't mm -hmm. even care. Man. So for Dizzy Rasco, seventh album coming out, what's your plans for the future? Another album. After this, yeah. <laughs> Greedy bastard. Yeah, so look, I'll keep going, man. Like, like I said, I'm obsessed. It's, this is still my hobby. So just be, just i am still learn about music. i am still mm -hmm. learn about music all the time, I sit and watch documentaries, I sit and like, little, little dumb things, like it might not be interesting to some viewers, like okay, I didn't, I'm not, I didn't know that the 909 drum kit w it was invented and then it got utilized by a bunch of people in Chicago because it, it was cheap because it hadn't sold very well. So it was, they, that's why they were able to buy it so cheap in those ghettos and a whole fucking, genre was born out of that which was house music yeah I'm 35 I learned that this week I knew what house music was but I didn't know those little details so what I'm basically saying there's so much for me to still learn like you know what I mean shit like that so today whatever I I've, I've, I've just in, on the, on the, in the car on the way to you I just saw um, what was that what's the what's that Tele telephonic what are they called oh, te technotronic technotronic I just see the pump up the jam video for the first time in my life. I knew pump the tune. Pump the jam. I've, I've, I've never seen the video before. <laughs> it's like, a fucking weird video. It's like acid. It's like somebody's tripping balls. You see what I'm saying, but I've never seen it before. Yeah. Like just little things like that. I know it sounds like I'm straying away from the point, but my point is there's so much to still learn. So I'm you, I'm gonna continue to keep yeah. making music because I just keep getting inspiration mm. from all this, all the stuff that's just out there. Yeah. There's so much we're we'll constantly learning. I know you're big. You're not. You're big on social media. You're massive, but you don't really nah. interact with it? Nah, nah. nah I think it fucks with your mind. Why is that? Why do you do that though? I think it gets in the way, man. I think yeah. it gets in the way. It's not, it's not every, it's not, you don't always need to know what people got to say to you, got to, yeah. got like, cause it feels like it's not as intense in person. Like people see you, it's easy as like, what's going on? Yo, Dizzy, this, what's going on, brother? You call cool? you want a picture? All right, cool. Sometimes you want a picture. Sometimes I don't want to take a picture for whatever reason, whatever, mm -hmm. seven in the morning, I'm, on the airport, I'm hungry, <laughs> I ain't eating yet. Or whatever, or I'm just in a bad mood because someone mm -hmm. pissed me off and I don't feel like taking a picture right now. I'm not being rude. It just is where it is, isn't it? Can't but, be asked. but you're just rude anyway, by default. Mm -hmm. So you're, just, uh, you're a cunt then, isn't it? Like, yeah. So, but you navigate that. That's cool. The majority of the time I'm nice to everyone and people are nice. But online, sometimes it just gets in the way, man. Like the, sh the shit people say, like people, it's like people look for shit to be pissed off about. And then, mm -hmm. and, then ah, and then and then just go mad yeah. in the comment section. And yeah, people just, can be nasty bastards. It's easy to there on the on thing, Yeah, behind the now. screen. Yeah, so it, much. for me yeah. they're pussies, man. They're just fucking weak legs. When you're outside there, what do you see? When you're driving about, what do you see? People minding their own damn business, yeah. and staying the fuck out of each other's way. Mm -hmm. That's what the real world's like, innit? Mm -hmm. But obviously, stuff from that like, spills into the real world. It can do, innit? Yeah. It can cause problems. But I've definitely, especially because I've got I've got an album coming. I've definitely obviously made more effort to mm -hmm. 
to be a bit more interact a bit like. more. Yeah, it's business as well, isn't it? Yeah, but but but, and, but don't get me wrong. Some there are a lot of good interactions. It's people that have been to old shows or people that remind you of stuff that you fully forgot. Like, mm-hmm. right, oh, that show or that little, mm-hmm. like those things are there, the gems. Like, yeah. like, it's like, but sometimes you have to go through a bunch of stuff yeah. or whatever, or people remind you like mm-hmm. or, of some, some shit that you don't even need to know about as well. Like, yeah. or, or, or people to do some shit that you did when you were 17. Like, and to an extent I can, like I said, I've got songs on here, beats on here that would sound similar or same energy as they did when I was, 17, mm-hmm. but I can't be 17 again, so. Yeah, but you yeah. became sex successful before social media. As a lot well. of people can be successful just by fucking releasing a video on Instagram or YouTube. Right. It's a weird different success, but you did that. How was your work ethic then? Was it non-stop? Because you never had the social media to utilize as an advantage? There was less media. I guess it was more TV and radio then, innit? it? And then just, yeah. well, pirate radio was our first social media because that's what brought people together. Mm-hmm. People were listening live. We, but the thing is, maybe it was easier because we didn't know, there was no number. It feels like everyone, you, like even me, it feels like you're chasing the numbers game now. So mm-hmm. that adds to the anxi- anxiety. Yeah. How many views? How many likes? How many, all, like, what the fuck is that? We were on radio going mad, spitting our hearts out mm-hmm. and don't even know if 30 people were listening. Yeah. And it was great. And then that that's what elevated us to the raves. And that's what elevated, elevated us, whatever, record labels signing us and then we're taking it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All this, I feel like a lot of this shit just gets in the way unnecessarily. Yeah, but, but we just, you know what? I guess it's just how, whatever people felt when music videos came in. So some people that didn't want to take to it, okay, it's, it's, a, it's a similar thing. It's just, a, it's just adjustment. Mm-hmm. So it's more about having to adjust. That's more important than me, f- whatever, moaning about, ah, fucking, I don't want to do that. You know, <laughs> or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's an adjustment. Like, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, as well as is. And we've just got to fucking try and utilise everything to our advantage. To be fair though, like, I did spaz a little bit. Like those, like I said, those years where I was out enjoying myself, mm-hmm. that I think that's probably where I actually grew my Instagram following. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I was, I was wilding, man. I was showing, I was showing shit that I wouldn't usually show. Yeah. I was getting excited and, and I built up all sorts of shit like yeah. that just at the time because I'm because you're because you're out there. It's a different culture out there. There's stuff that's just cri- a bit more acceptable out there, and it's more almost mainstream culture mm-hmm. out there than it is here. But like, if I'm in in a fucking strip club, <laughs> eat, eating chicken, uh-huh. getting whatever massive ass in front of me, mm-hmm. filming it out there until in the morning. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah. But it's eight in the morning in England. Mm-hmm. That's the first thing people are seeing. Yeah, arse and chicken. And sometimes <laughs> it's kids, yeah. <laughs> and it's, th- it's that full process that yeah. like, oh shit, actually, mm-hmm. nah, you can't do that. Yeah. So I told yeah. it down, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you're a role model as well. People are looking for you as the answers, as inspiration. Apparently, for, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then I'm random, like, I ain't got the answers. You know? <laughs> I'm yeah. still looking. So for your next, you going to try and get, do a next an album straight away for next year? I've already started. Any big names coming on that? <sighs> Can't say. I, I can, man. I've got, I've got, I've got a little sighting with um, with Noel Gallagher. Oh, that'll and be fucking Cole. legendary. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just right, right now it's being mixed. Yeah. But yeah, that that's one. And the rest, I'm just, I'm just experimenting. I said I bought a bunch of new keyboards, bunch of new hardware, and just um experimenting so I'm coming mm-hmm. up with stuff yeah. writing bits recorded a few bits mm-hmm. but like I said this album ain't even out by the time this one comes this album, this album get you back out. on yeah, again yeah. anyway oh come on man yeah Pause. before we finish up we'll touch on a couple of things Glastonbury headline mm. it must be happening eh? you'd think in it yeah you'd think man if we all them festivals man and fucking I put the groundwork in yeah for like all mm-hmm. these MCs like if we really because I was at all these festivals when they definitely had no faith in UK rappers Rap. or MCs, like there was definitely, there was, there was some other UK rappers around. That was almost its own thing. It was almost like a separate thing. But as far as carrying a show to a massive crowd, like show after show, like, mm-hmm. yeah, I did that from like 14, 15 years ago. Yeah. And, you, and I've done Glastonbury so many times 
And there's a couple times where I should have been the headliner, but they put me the one, the one just before. Yeah. Again, because they, they, they have the faith, or maybe whoever it is, they this the same time. Maybe they're thinking they're trying to sell tickets and who's mm-hmm. going to be the bigger yeah. draw. But it definitely there's one there's one year where Red Hot Chili Peppers I think dropped out, and they put they replaced them with the Gorillas instead of putting me up. Mm-hmm. And it's like you definitely could have just like put me in that slot yeah, there yeah, because yeah. I got this. My shows are is my show is a headline show. It doesn't matter where we are, mm-hmm. because just there's, there's too many bangers. Mm-hmm. It's just too jam with too many bangers, and we give it a thousand percent. Yeah. It's just a headline show. With, like, yeah. it's just, like it's to just get no the fucking money. crowd yeah. walking away in a high. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what we do. Like, mm-hmm. That's what it is. And every now and then, sometimes well, you're gonna have a show that wasn't as good as you wanted it to be yeah. for whatever reason. But come on, man. Yeah, I'll happen. Fucking get the fingers but out. If, but no, but if it doesn't happen, so what? Yeah. It's like past but you've still anyway. been on the main stage, but be, like being second last, it's like finishing it's second it's like being in a, a race. Man yeah. On the moon, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I was the second man on the moon. Like, no, one made a feel, no one made a fool about the second man on the moon, yeah. did they? It will happen. It yeah. will definitely happen. Cool. Last question, brother. I know because of like coronavirus and all this shit. Yeah. For all like festivals and stuff, you're still doing a lot of headlining stuff, but it's drive through, is it? No, that, that one got cancelled as well. <laughs> yeah. It just went on Piers Morgan for no reason. Uh, good morning, Britain. Did that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It got cancelled. So, do you think everything will be back next year then where people can enjoy a concert or do you think musicians I, I, I honestly don't know, man. I don't, I, hopefully you can, innit? But I don't know how you're going to have a festival with, ev- like, of, I don't know, say 80,000 people or even one of the smaller ones, yeah. 30,000 people, what, two metres apart? Yeah. Good and luck. that thousand fucking people there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, or 30,000 people yeah, there. Yeah. So like, okay, how's that going to work, innit? Yeah. Like, and then mm-hmm. I almost like, oh, I, I wouldn't want to have to go through all those things, like go go through that like, bunch of testing before I go to a festival to, yeah. get, to get, I don't know. Yeah, hopefully things can move forward. But Dizzy, yeah. for coming on today, brother, and telling your story, it's been unbelievable. I've, uh, I very much appreciate it. For just finishing up, mate, anybody watching, just looking for a wee bit of inspiration, it's what to start off in the rap scene. What advice would you have for them? What advice would I... Um, Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely do it. Definitely do it. It's not always going to go your way. Mm-hmm. And just, if you really want it, just don't do anything else. That's what I did. I dropped out of college because I did, made up my mind, like, why am I here? I could mm-hmm. be doing this outside. And within that year, that's when I got the record deal. Yeah. So, like I said, it's not always going to be easy, though. I don't want to tell anyone, everyone to, anyone to drop out of college or not. Yeah. Just, just stick at it because one thing I've learned: anything can happen, man. Some of these guys that you see and popping right now, they're always smashing it. They've been in the game a while. They look new. Their success is new, but they're not new. They just, they just stuck at it. Yeah, brother. Yes, sir. Congratulations on the new you, album man. coming out. I look forward to hearing that. Yeah, man. And have a great day. Brother. It's you too. Check out more of my podcasts on the right and be sure to like, share and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you.